starting now. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're just going to take uh, allow a few more minutes to uh, let uh, people log in and and join us today. So just a few more minutes and we'll get started. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for uh, the LA County Business Series, doing business with uh, the Department of Public Works. Uh, we're very excited that you are joining us today. This is uh, the first in what we hope to be a series uh, where we feature uh, numerous LA County departments and, uh, and you can learn about the things that they sell and really how to do business with them and just learn a little bit more about the different departments within the county. Uh, before we get started with our presenters today, I wanted to uh, tell you all a little bit about the, the structure of our presentation today and also a little bit about uh, our department and um, the services that we have available. So uh, first, we'll have two speakers today, uh, one from the, the Los Angeles County Department of Public Works to tell you about our, uh, the county certification programs, and we'll also have a uh, a speaker from the LA County Department of, uh, I'm sorry, our first speaker will be from the LA County Department of Consumer and Business Affairs that will tell you about the county certification programs. And then we'll have another speaker from the LA County Department of Public Works. Um, after each speaker, we'll give everybody a moment to ask questions. So we'll pause, we'll check in with everyone, and we'll make sure you get all your questions answered. Um, you can, on the right side of your screen, uh, there is a bar where you can ask us a question. So just type in your question and we will make sure that we, we answer it. So without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and get started. So I want to start by telling you all about the, a little bit about the services available with the Department of Consumer and Business Affairs in the Office of Small Business. So we have about uh, essentially three different uh, service areas. Uh, one is 
we administer the, the county certification programs, which, which you will learn a lot more of uh, shortly with our next speaker. But essentially, the county has um, several certification programs that can really give you a boost uh, when you're looking to do business with the, the county of LA. Uh, we also have a Procurement Technical Assistance Center, or PTEC, um, and where we provide government uh, uh, contracting technical assistance. And then last but not least, we have the Small Business Concierge, which is a uh, counseling program designed to assist uh, aspiring entrepreneurs in the County of Los Angeles. And uh, we provide counseling uh, and information on really how to start up your, your business in, in the County of LA, especially the unincorporated parts of Los Angeles County. So a little bit more about the, the PTEC. Um, the PTEC program is actually, it was authorized by Congress in 1985, and there are only, there are about 94 PTECs, Procurement Technical Assistance Centers, uh, located nationwide. Uh, there are eight PTECs in the County of Los Angeles, and I mean, I'm sorry, in the, the state of California, and there's only one PTEC in the County of Los Angeles. So uh, we serve a pretty large area. Uh, and essentially what a PTEC is, is it's supposed to function as like a bridge between the buyer and the supplier um, and helping to bring uh, uh, small business, small diverse and especially local businesses and connect them with government contracting opportunities at, at all levels of government. So some of the services that we provide through the LA County PTEC are one-on-one uh, -on -one technical assistance. That's really our main uh, service that, that we provide. And so we work with you one-on-one -on -one, uh, to really help you get started, whether it's registering different, uh, different systems to uh, do business with government, uh, identify certifications that you're eligible for, or uh, identify opportunities that would be uh, relevant for your type of business. We also host workshops like this, and uh, we, have, uh, act we, we provide access to uh, uh, different tools, uh, subscription-based tools um, free of charge. And those could be really valuable to really identify some potential leads. If you are interested in scheduling an appointment with us, um, you please just shoot us an email at ptac, ptech, at dcba.lacounty.gov. Uh, shoot us an email, let us know you're interested. It's just a quick registration and one of our counselors will set up a one-on-one -on -one virtual appointment with you. So, Without further ado, I want to go ahead and introduce um, our first speaker, uh, Jessica Mireles. She is a small business counselor at the Department of Consumer and Business Affairs in the Office of Small Business. And Jessica is going to tell you a little bit more about the county's uh, certification programs. Go ahead and take it away, Jessica. Awesome, thank you, Fernando. Um, so I, as Fernando has said, I am with the Office of Small Business. I am a Procurement Technical Assistance Counselor, and I also work on the certifications as well. So the first thing to understand about doing business with any department in the County of Los Angeles or uh, any government agency really is to register on that agency's website. And for the county, it's the doingbusiness.lacounty.gov website. Uh, that website, this is going to be the landing page that you'll see when you select that option to register. It'll prompt you through about five different steps to create a profile. And the purpose of the profile is to ensure that the county buyers and procurement uh, staff within each respective department can find you. Um, what you'll need to register is your taxpayer identification number, your company organization main contact name, phone number, address, a California sales tax uh, Permit. If it's applicable, if you're selling a product in California, you'll, you will be required to provide that. Um, and then a list of products and services. So again, um, this functions as a profile for a way to communicate what it is that your business or agency does and how it can interact with a county procurement opportunity. So the, if you really want to spend a good amount of time on developing your products and service codes. Um, you want to think of this as, so every government agency really has its own 
coding index system. You may be familiar with things like NAICS codes or UNSCSC codes. Uh, the county uses what's called commodity codes. Uh, you can do this by searching. It allows you to search when you're creating your profile based on keywords. Um, and you want to make sure that you're creating a robust list because these are the codes that are going to be utilized when uh, a procurement opportunity becomes available. You'll get auto notified based on the set, the set selection of commodity codes that you include in your profile. Um, so it is really important to spend a good amount of time there. Part of what you can do is research, you know, how were past procurements uh, listed? What were the commodity codes that they were purchased under? Uh, to make sure that if there is something that has a nexus to what your goods or services are, that you're including it in your profile so you'll be notified automatically as those become available again. Um, and then again, we, we can assist with that. If you have any issues with the registration program, the uh, department that is in charge of that website and that uh, profile creation is going to be the Internal Services Department. Uh, their contact information is listed on the screen. You can either call them by phone, you can call or email them, the email address is there. If you wanted the direct link to the registration page without going through the Doing Business portal, it's also listed uh, just below the phone number. Um, so again, when you're doing this, you really want to think of not doing a Google search for your business, but, you know, the past uh, processes for like a library, looking up your your business as if you were trying to find a book. So if you are involved in transportation, you want to make sure that you include hauling or that you include um, automotive services and, and you kind of create a very broad listing. Uh, so now we'll go into certification. So again, the Office of Small Business, which is housed within the Department of Consumer and Business Affairs, is the uh, authority on the certification programs for the county. There are six different types of participations that you can you may qualify for. So the preference program entities have a different set of benefits that are exclusive to these programs, and they include the local small business enterprise program, the disabled veteran business enterprise program, and the social enterprise program. Um, we can, I'm not going to go too in depth about the different uh, eligibility requirements for each. If you do want more information, I would recommend that you contact our office and we can work with you on trying to figure out what is the best combination of certifications that you can get for county procurement. Uh, the community business enterprise programs include women business enterprise statuses, minority business, and disadvantaged business enterprise. The only thing that I will mention is that there are two different websites listed on this page, and that is because there are two different certification portals for the County of Los Angeles certification program. So if you are looking to participate in the Community Business Enterprise Program, or CBEs, um, you will use the link on the right side of this page. Uh, for the preference program entities, you'll use the certified.lacounty.gov and um, it, it will take you automatically to the page. But again, you have to register as a vendor first in order to gain access to, this, to these profiles. Um, these are some of the PPE preference program, the preference program entity certification benefits. They include a 15% bid price preference, which is a non-monetary preference that's applied to make you more competitive in the solicitation process. Uh, you'll be eligible for the simplified acquisition process, which is a type of procurement method that buyers can use so that they can more directly do business with you if you are certified. Uh, all certifications put you on an exclusive listing and database that uh, is publicly searchable, so individuals outside of the county can also utilize this to identify you as a small business. Um, and then it is also leveraged by different procurement staff and, and internally as well. Uh, the 15 day prompt payment. This is really one of the more attractive benefits of the small business program that we have. Um, it entitles you to 15 day payment, which is you know really unheard of for government agencies. Uh, but that 15 day payment will start on um, the date of an undisputed invoice. So once all the invoices and the deliveries have been done, then you know it's verified and then that 15 day period will start. So we also have a prompt payment liaison that works in the auditor controller's office that it you know really makes sure that this is being followed by different departments. 
we are monitoring it. We want to make sure that this is something that is, you know, benefits the small businesses that are participating and are awarded on different purchases or solicitations. Um, okay, so now I'll go ahead and kind of just go into how the certification is applied. And what you want to look at here is that there are three different, in this example, there are three different bidders. Um, company one, two, and three. So in the example, we see that company one actually is the lowest cost and lowest bidder, and company three is the certified bidder. So under normal circumstances, company one would actually win the contract, whatever the solicitation is. Um, however, since company three is certified, once all uh, accepted bids have been closed, then they will calculate that 15% preference based on the cost that was submitted by the lowest bidder, regardless of whether that bidder is certified, and then apply whatever that amount would be. So in this case, it would be 15% of 165,000 uh, would be 24,750. And that is now deducted from any certified bidder that is been accepted on that proposal or on you know that solicitation opportunity. Um, and then their price is now evaluated at whatever that lower cost is. So it now, company three now becomes the lowest bidder because of that preference being applied. And, and again, that, that's kind of how you're gonna become a little more competitive in the solicitation process where larger companies can sometimes, you know, underbid or, or have lower costs or, or lower overheads. Um, this is really a tactic that's used to benefit the businesses that are part of the PPE program. Um, so I'm gonna pause there for some Q&A and then toss it back to Fernando. Thank you, Jessica. Um, great information. Uh, great to learn about those certification programs and uh, those benefits. So now let's take a, a quick pause to answer any questions that you all had over um, the information that Jessica shared. Um, I already see one question here. So the question is, we are selling a product, UVC disinfectant lighting that is proven to kill 99.9% .9 of all viruses. How can we register this uh, product on the county website. Um, so the product itself, you're not registering. You want to make sure that you are registering your business uh, at the Doing Business portal, and you're going to use the product and service codes that would be that are most commonly associated with that. So there are commodity codes that are for you know sanitizing products, janitorial products. Um, that's what I would recommend that you do is create a really broad profile of different commodity codes that have to do with, uh, you know, cleaning, desanitizing, and then also uh, product, the product and service codes for actual distribution. Um, if you need assistance with registering, you can always contact our office and we can schedule that for you now. Uh, I don't think I... Sorry Thank about you. that. I'm having... Thank you, Jessica. So I hold um, a couple minutes and let you all uh, ask any questions that you would like. Once again, if you can, if you just use the, the bar on your right and click uh, ask us a question, uh, you could just type in your question. Okay, looks like we have a another question. So the 15% preference it cannot exceed 150,000. As per previous example, the 24,750 can go up to 150,000. I'm not sure if we still have Jessica. Jessica, are you there? 
Uh, yeah, I'm not able to see the questions, but I'm sorry. Can you repeat the, the question for sure. me? Sure. So the, the question is essentially um, the, the preference is 150 is pretty is the preference uh, capped uh, or is the limit uh, 150,000 or is there a limit for the preference amount? Great question. There is a limit. It is 150,000. So um, any preference that would be over that amount. So if the 15% was calculated on something that was over, you know, a $50 million contract, uh, it would not ever exceed that, but you would get maxed out at that 150. So that would still be applied. And then again, this is going to be leveraged on purchases that would qualify. So it's anything over 5,000. Um, so anything under 5,000 that maybe goes through like a simplified acquisition uh, process won't necessarily qualify for the preference in the same way. Excellent. Thank you, Jessica. All right, so I'll allow just a couple more minutes for any other questions uh, that you all might have, and then we will move forward to our, our next uh, speaker. So I'll just give you all a couple more minutes. Looks like we have one more question. 15% also applies to SBE or has to be SDBE, WBE, etc. So the preference only applies to the programs that are under the preference program entity uh, umbrella, which is going to be the local small business, the disabled veteran business enterprise, and the social enterprise programs. So if you participate in any one of those three programs, uh, you will be eligible to uh, request for preference consideration on a solicitation. The WBE, MBE, and the DBE, so any of the um, community business enterprise programs are not eligible due to state um, procurement laws that you know, won't allow us to uh, provide a preference on those types of statuses. So the benefit of that is, again, those are more for like diversity supplier goals, subcontracting goals. Uh, that's really where those statuses become really valuable, um, but they do not receive the non-monetary preference. OK, so uh, with that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and um, start with our next presenter. So our next presenter is, uh, as we mentioned, uh, from LA County Department of Public Works. Uh, his name is Robert Murphy. Uh, he is a, a unit head over at the Department of Public Works in the Business Relations and Contract Division. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to uh, Robert. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, go ahead and uh, I'll let you share your screen now. Thank you, Fernando. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jessica, all our partners at DCBA, and especially it's uh, everybody here that's that's uh, watching. It's a real pleasure to be here to speak with you all today and tell you a little bit about Los Angeles County Public Works, who we are, what we do, and of course, the most important part is how do you become involved in what we do? Um, on this screen, you can see on, on, in a one page snapshot what we are, what we're about. It's our vision, it's our mission, uh, and our values that are uh, built into everything that we do at Public Works. It's the culture of Public Works. Everything starts right here. It's the foundation for, for what we do. Uh, I want to call your attention to the mission statement. Uh, we deliver regional infrastructure and services improving the quality of life for more than 10 million people in Los Angeles County. So 
Uh, let's very quickly talk about what that means. Delivering regional infrastructure and services. Uh, the first thing you need to understand is that that mission statement captures a lot of activities. And on the screen, you can see that uh, our, our, this is our org chart. This is how public works is organized. Um, I'm not showing you this to show off my managers, although they're all great, but I just want to see, give you a sense of the structure. Um, you can see along the third line, there's a, what we call deputy directors, and they're all running core service areas, they're kind of like branches that, that focus on certain areas. So we have environmental services, transportation, construction development, um public contracting and asset management which is the branch that i work on and you can see we've circled my division manager jose Cavito there and um, so uh, uh, in development services and emergency management the, the takeaway being that we we do a lot of things for la county it's not we're, we're not a department that just focuses on on, on one type of service we have many different, uh, we have a large and diverse operation that touches many areas of the county. And so now I guess the real question is, uh, well, what does that have to do with you and your business? Well, Los Angeles County Public Works needs the help of private businesses to deliver all of those services we provide to the public um, and specifically we need companies that can help across those broad range of services that we deliver um, we have a lot of contracting needs and the reason is because of all of those because of the the breadth of the services that we provide so it's a good place to start. We have, you know, we're a big county and there's a lot of contracting opportunities, but we have we have a lot of services. It's a good place to start when you're looking to do to get your business involved in government contracting. Um, on the screen, you can see here some of the examples that we of the types of contracts we're looking for building and construction projects and they can be as small as just uh, refurbishing a, uh, a, a, a horse stable to as big as uh, redoing a $250 million hospital and everything in between. So we need a lot of help on that. And then if infrastructure maintenance, uh, you know, keeping the bridges go, uh, 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 in good operating condition and that type of work, the roads, um, and then professional services, a lot of consulting type services with specialized information that uh, help us to deliver those services. And then of course, of course, uh, procurement, we need, we need things to actually get the work done. So uh, this screen, you quickly explain what this is. So Jessica mentioned commodity codes. The commodity codes stand for a particular type of service. On the left hand side, you can see a consultant services that that would have a commodity a code attached to it or an object code. And then uh, you can see to the right how much money was spent on those types of contracts in the last fiscal year, year 2000. 1920. Um, these are the top 10 awarded types of contracts to all county vendors. So not just the certified uh, vendors that Jessica was talking about, but all county vendors certified and non-certified, but you have to be um, you have to be registered as a vendor to do business with us. So let's just take a quick look at this. Um, you can see that we have consultants that have, they provide a wide range of specialized services. We have public health services, equipment rentals, transportation services, and many others. 
it, it's again a broad range. It speaks to how much we do and how much help we need. But I want you to also pay attention to the amount of money that we're spending on these contracts. It, it's hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars to help us complete our mission. And there's no reason why your company can't be a part of that. Okay, and so this page looks very similar to the last one, but this is these numbers are specific to the certified vendors. So what Jessica was talking about. So for example, if you're a local small business and you're not certified, because you think, ah, you know, it's only the big players are giving the money to. That's not true. We are trying hard and are very focused on prompt, uh, giving uh, local small business enterprises and other types of businesses um, an opportunity on these contracts. And so you can see the proof here from last year. This is over $100 million worth of contracts awarded to uh, certified vendors. So the local small business enterprises, disabled veteran owned business, uh, disabled veteran business enterprises. And again, it, it the, there's the, across a broad range of services. So keep that in mind if you're an LSBE or a DDBE and um, you just don't want to go through the trouble of getting certified, it's worth it. You, you, could, you, you could potentially uh, take your business to the next next step as you can see these businesses have done themselves. Because it, it's happening. We are giving contracts to small businesses. Get get involved with that. And so uh, talking about the big players, there's a uh, there are uh, th these are the top prime contractors that we had last year and prime contractor would be the person the co the company that gets the main contract and you can see that these are mostly these are going to be mostly big companies we get uh um you might re you may recognize some of them some of these are construction companies you may not recognize but socal edison of course you recognize but I think there's a, something that's important to remember about this. These are the big players and they get the big contracts, but let, let me tell you, they don't do all the work themselves. They're not out there performing all of the work themselves. They use sub, a lot of subcontractors to do the, the work. And so if you aren't interested in going out to be a prime on award, there, uh, let's say you, you can't find a, a contract that you're qualified to be a prime on, there's still opportunities for you to tap into this this world as a subcontractor. And uh, that doesn't mean just sitting back and hoping that one of these top 10 companies contacts you and uh, says, oh, they, you know, I noticed this company, let's see if we can get them on board. It, it, it means having an, an active plan to create the relationships you need with these big companies to for them to consider you as a subcontractor. That means getting up each morning and with the plan to build those relationships and getting out there and finding out. And here's a good start. Um, you can see we, we get a, we, uh, Public Works has given these companies a lot of money, and uh, I'm sure a lot of this money has made its way down to subcontractors. So um, that's kind of an overview of how the uh, how we do our, our how the contracting works um, through public works, what we're looking for, the services we provide. And so now the next step is, OK, so what do you do? How do you get involved? Well, we have a website. That's the first place you want to start. Uh, it allows you to see what types of contracting opportunities are available to you. And this is where you hit, we have all of the information you need to successfully research solicitations and help prepare your bids or your proposals. So that's the first step. You go to the, the, the business website on the screen there. It's called Do Business with Public Works. Um, you can even Google Do Business with Public Works and it goes straight to it. And, and you can take a look at the contracting and purchasing opportunities that are available to you. So 
on our website, and this is actually on the right side, that's actually a screenshot of our website. On the website, you'll be able to filter and search the contracts the best way that fits your needs. Some of the filtering options available to you include building and infrastructure projects, professional services, purchasing opportunities, sundry services. Some of the things that I've already discussed and mentioned, um, but, you know, just use, you can filter it by that, that type, or you can also use keywords that match your services. Um, so uh, Jessica mentioned in knowing your commodity codes, you look, at, look at those commodity codes, see, see, see what they call them. Look for, look, isolate the keyword that really captures the services that you provide so that you can do your you can customize your searches you don't have to just like go you don't have to look into building projects and see what's there and say oh there's nothing there for me do a little work and see what what best fits your business what really captures your business if you have a business that sells hardware and um you have firmware that you that you want to that you potentially want that want to see if there's a contract for Use keywords like that because you, you see there's not a hardware section here. You would have to do it. You'd have to do a customized search or hope you get lucky and just find it. Which I don't suggest. I suggest you be a little more proactive. See that, find that keyword and uh, do some active searching on there. This is also our okay. So let's say we've you've you searched, you've figured out your keyword, you've done your filtering, you're doing uh, you know what you want, and you're ready to go. And so you you find some uh, you you find a, a a a way a way to kind of navigate our system and see what's going on. Well, we we also have another way that you can search. You can search by the the status of the solicitation or the contract opportunity. Um, and on the left hand side, you see we have our, our open contracts. Those are the ones that are available to, to, to bid or propose on. Um, upcoming, which can be important. That way it helps you prepare for potentially a contract that we may be coming up in the future. And then um, we have closed and awarded, which you may think, well, why would I care about those? Those are already done. Well, if you look at those, if you're familiar with what we've awarded in the past, it gives you a good sense of what we may award in the future. And then that can kind of help you say, OK, so this contract goes for three years, so I've got to be ready in the next three years. Like to, they may potentially, Public Works may potentially still need this service and I've got to be ready to go for it. So just different options for you to, to search for uh, the different types of solicitations that are available. Just giving you some options on finding the contract that best fits your needs. And so let's say you find the contract that fits your need. Uh, On-call designated underground storage tank operator services. Hey, that's exactly what so you say to yourself. That's exactly what I do. This is perfect for me. Now what do I do? OK, so the next step is um, you found the good fit. And you want to become very well acquainted with the requirements of the solicitation. So on the screen are some key areas to carefully research and understand. And you can see some of the blue arrow arrows that point out to those sections. So you, you're going to want to know the scope of services. You want to make sure you know the dates of the meetings, and the submission deadlines. You're going to want to know the contract administrator that's responsible for that specific solicitation and um, all the various documents that are crucial for you to fully understand oh, what you need to prepare your bid or proposal. And so this is very important. You want to make sure that when you find that project and you've done your research that, and you, you, you determine it's a good fit for your company, you want to make sure that uh, you become, you register as a plan holder. So typically at the bottom of the page, there's a place where you can sign up for, uh, to be a plan holder so that it's when we, update the information that's available to the bidders, the proposers, that information goes to you also. Um, 
it's also a good place for um, say if you're not lo interested in being a prime it's a good place to um, let potential primes know that you're interested in being a sub um, now that doesn't mean that again just sign up and then wait for them to contact you because um, they're probably not going to do that you're going to want to be a little bit more proactive maybe reach out to them and say you know sell yourself to them and then finally uh, i don't expect any of you to have the time to check your our website daily and i don't want you to miss out on some of the great opportunities that we have hundreds of millions of dollars of contracts awarded each year. Uh, I urge you to sign up on our Do Business with Public Websites newsletter. It's an email blast that we send out weekly that has all the new opportunities. So let's say you don't feel like going back, going back and looking at what's already up there, then we'll send every week we'll send you what the new ones are for that week and you can just look at them. It's usually between one to 10. You can just take a quick look and see if they fit your needs. Uh, they give you the information about all the new solicitations, and we have we also have a lot of other information and resources for small businesses on that uh, email blast. So I, I strongly encourage you to go to the to the website on the screen here and and sign up for and and sign up for our newsletter. So. Um, that just about concludes my presentation. I want to leave it open for some questions. If you have anything specific about what we've, what I have just been talking about, or um, if you uh, think of something later, then potentially you can uh, email that email address that was on the screen there. And we, somebody or somebody from my team will certainly get back to you. That was uh, excellent information. Thank you, Robert. Uh, so we do have a couple of questions that have come in while you were presenting. Um, one of them is, uh, how do we become a subcontractor? Do we connect directly with the prime contractors? Okay, that's a very good question. And I wish that um, I had included a slide that showed that. Uh, so I mentioned becoming a plan holder. Uh, on the solicitation page, when you find a contract that is uh, it seems like a good fit and that you may be able to contribute to as a prime or a subcontractor, then you need to become a plan holder. And there's a section in there that will allow you to sign up it, to show your interest as a sub. And so the primes will, will there'll be a section for primes. You'll see all the primes that have signed up as plan holders and you'll see a section for subs and the services they provide for uh, that particular contract or solicitation and so but I, again i want to stress this i want to stress this point that just signing up and being a plan holder and putting your name on that list uh you could potentially get a prime that says hey i i recognize this company and you know i'm good and i, I want to take a chance on them but what i suggest you do is since you have your name listed as a sub and you also have information to the people who are interested in being the primes on this contract. Be proactive and reach out to the primes uh, because they probably have no, their own people that they work with. So you get something together, put a package together and sell yourself to those potential primes so that they can consider you as a sub on their project if they get awarded the contract. And so the, the key is to become a plan holder and that's on the in the solicitation page on the information uh, on the main information page for that solicitation page if you 
Um, if you have trouble finding that or if you need help, then reach out to me or my team and we'll be very happy to help you get set up with that. It's actually pretty simple, but it, you know, if you're not familiar with it, it can be uh, a little bit daunting. There is a lot of information on there and we'd be happy to help you with that. Thank you, Robert. Uh, we do have uh, one more question. Uh, is the county having a problem with COVID-19 and workers coming into your offices or employees getting infected? Um, who at the county level can we talk to? Uh, so essentially they, they have a UBC disinfectant lighting. Who at the county level can we talk to about this game changing lighting? Um, well, that kind of, so that's, a, that's more about, um, that's more about self, that, that kind of goes more about, so I think back to what Jessica was saying about making your product available to the county and making, uh, selling it to us to be interested in it as a, as a potential service or product. That's not something that's really in our wheelhouse. We we come after that. Um, I can certainly we can find the information and we can I can link you with uh, the people you need to talk to that make the decisions to about what types of services and products we, we're going to use. Um, but we kind of come in after that. We come in once that's already been determined, and we say, "Yeah, we do want to, but we want to, we want somebody to provide the, this, this service." So let's do it. Let's put a solicita uh, solicitation together and, and get that going. But if you um, if you leave your 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 contact information there, I can uh, connect you with somebody that you can talk to about that. I also just wanted to expand on that. Sorry, what Robert was saying. Um, that, yeah, registration is going to be the first step. And then there are procurement staff. If you go through the doing business portal, there are listings of different contract managers, uh, procurement personnel in each respective department uh, that you may be wanting to provide your information to or about the product or send over a capability statement. And, and just kind of, we can discuss marketing tactics in our in a PTAC setting. Um, so if you are interested in working one-on-one -on -one with us, then you know absolutely reach out to our office and request an appointment. We can kind of show you and guide you through what Doing Business Portal has to offer, and then that with any contact information that Robert can provide, you know, we'll get you in the right hands. Awesome, thank you uh, both for those answers. We have uh, one. Uh, we have another question. The question is, do LA school district, LA school districts list building renovation projects uh, on their website? So uh, Robert, I'm not sure if you all work with the school districts um, and, and I'm not sure if that's an, a question you can answer. Uh, I'm not familiar with uh, the school district. Uh, they probably do, but I'm not familiar with the, what projects the school districts um, how they list them or market them. It's typically not with, it's, it's not typically the type of construction projects that we would work on. It, we would, uh, that, that's a little bit different. They have a, a different setup for that. We would, we do, we would do things like hospitals and parks and um, various government buildings and that, that the schools are a little more specialized and we don't we haven't i haven't seen a lot of construction projects come out of public works for schools they have their own their own setup okay. again i again I, I can i can certainly find that out uh, for you and i can direct you to the right person if you leave your information okay um so the uh, curious really uh, whether uh, Public Works does work with any school districts, but um, to help kind of so, um, and answer that question, um, the school districts that we have um, uh, identified opportunities with through the LA County PTAC when we, when we work with clients, they are they post a lot of their opportunities on their own websites, and it is a, a little bit separate. But I was definitely curious to know whether Public Works works with any of uh, these uh, school districts. So a few more questions. Let's see. Uh, so uh, uh, getting a lot of questions about uh, the PowerPoint. So we will absolutely send out this PowerPoint to all of our attendees today. 
Um, so you can uh, just you know check out any of this information that was shared today or any of the links that were also shared on these slides. Um, the other thing I really encourage everyone to do is um, so reach out to us. Reach out to the LA County PTAC. Uh, shoot us an email and we'll set you up with a one on one and we could really dive deeper into uh, the discussion of doing business with the county. So I'll uh, give a couple more minutes to anybody else that wants to get their, their questions in. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we will be sending out a survey uh, after this event to all of our attendees just so we could get an idea of what your, uh, your experience was, what you would uh, maybe like to see in the future, and uh, just your, your overall um, experience at today's event. So if you have any more questions, now's your chance. All right, everyone. So it, it looks like um, like you guys answered all of their questions. Um, I, I guess that, that's how thorough our presentations were today that uh, we have no questions uh, left. But so I will go ahead and uh, just wrap this up. So I want to first give a thank you to our presenters today, uh, Jessica Mireles and uh, Robert. Uh, I appreciate you both uh, attending and speaking at our event. And uh, of course, I, I want to thank all of our attendees. Um, thank you all for taking an hour out of your day to join us and uh, hopefully learn some good information that you can take back and uh, leverage to potentially just register as a vendor, seek a certification, or really start trying to find opportunities with the county. If that's what you do decide to do, then please let us help you uh, through that process and help guide you through that process. Uh, one last time, if you are interested in um, a one on one appointment with one of our counselors, then just reach out to us at ptac at dcba.lacounty.gov or at osb at dcba.lacounty.gov. You could also just give us a call at 323-881-3964 and uh, be sure to follow us on social media uh, at LA County DCBA, at Lake Lake Small Biz on Twitter, and at LA County DCBA on Facebook. So that will actually conclude our presentation for today. Uh, thank you everybody for joining. Bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>